of abuse. Either way to me, I thought that that word was a compliment. High praise, another way of saying that someone was an Irish patriot, another way of saying that someone was an Irish Republican. Why should someone be called that Athenian ever be repentant? And why would it be so significant and noteworthy that you'd point out when somebody was Athenian and was unrepentant? Well, those words, of course, are easier to see the meaning of the phrase today. But Brendan Hughes surely lived his life and died as an unrepentant Irish Fenian. He would have never repented or denied or disavowed his part in the IRA struggle against British rule. That he could have denied he was from Belfast or repented that he was an Irishman, or disavowed the legitimacy of the struggle that he was a part of by putting on a criminal uniform in the H blocks of Long Catch. The very idea, if somebody had suggested to him that you repent or disavow or deny your part in the IRA struggle in order to make yourself more acceptable to a British administration, in order to be more acceptable to a Paisley or Robinson Red Stormman, would have been answered by him with a sly grin, being told to cop yourself on, and maybe a few other words that I won't repeat as part of the instruction to do it. Last week, or a little over a week ago, David Cameron took time out from his busy schedule with more important matters and visited Stormont. And part of what he deems and deliberately, repeatedly calls uh, this part of the United Kingdom. And he patted himself on the back. He congratulated himself for that hard-worn apology that the Bloody Sunday families fought for, for for decades to get. And then he said he did it to close the chapter. And then he said he did it to differentiate the Bloody Sunday unjustifiable acts from the honorable service of so many who have been in the name of British rule and law. Well, Brendan Hughes, first of all, there doesn't seem to be much repentance in his words, the words of Dave and Cameron does there. There doesn't seem much repentance for the Bally Murphy massacre or for torture or for internment or shoot to kill or their part of pollution. blocks of on cash or for any of the many other unjustifiable acts which the British used, selected, chose as tactics to remain, to maintain their rule in Ireland. But Brendan Hughes was different. He would have counted himself proud to be one of those who fought against these unjustifiable and unjustified acts which the British used to remain in Ireland and fought against the very idea that the right of Irish people all Irish people to national freedom ends a few miles from here at the uh, border somewhere be here, between here and where Jim McAllister lives. <laughs> it's hardly necessary for me, in the presence of this family, in the presence of so many people who fought alongside Brendan, fought alongside and were with him in the streets of Belfast or were with him in the H blocks of Long Cash. But I just want to me measure a bit or talk a bit about his service. If only because there are some who believe that as part of a new political dispensation, you try and dispense with the reputation and the deeds and the exploits of those who do not blindly fall behind the current narrative. Brendan Hughes, I knew him as so many did. Before I ever met him, I knew of him. He was somebody that volunteers in Belfast talked about the same way that some volunteers in Tyrone would talk about a Jim Lina or a Pete Ryan or others would talk about Francis Hughes and of course there are others in other parts of the country. IRA volunteers, men and women, whose courage was such that they seemed to spill over and inspire everybody who fought with them, who made it seem as if all of the advantages that the British had in terms of weapons, in terms of surveillance, in terms of intelligence, all of that could be neutralized and overcome simply because people like Brendan Hughes were there 
out on the mission fighting with them and giving those people around him the confidence to believe and achieve that they would indeed succeed and overcome. Brendan was somebody who joined the IRA at the very beginning, came out on the streets of Belfast, rose through the ranks, went to jail, saw a relative Charlie Hughes killed, was undeterred by anything, went to jail, came out again and again rejoined the fight, rose through the ranks, became a commander, became a leader, led, he was a strategist, went to jail again, and then when he escaped, it's characteristic of him, that when he escaped, he didn't do it to get to the South, he didn't do it to get to rest, he didn't do it just to get away from the pressure of going to jail. He did it with the idea to get back as quickly as he could, back to Belfast and back into the thick of the fight, would risk going to prison again.